Web 3.0 is absolutely exploding. We're talking about a technology that's getting adopted twice as fast as the internet was in the late 90s. And there's an insane amount of demand for tech talent in this space, unlike anything we've ever seen before. You know, blockchain is one of the highest paying skills in tech. I've done YouTube videos on my channel recently interviewing beginners who are making six figure salaries in their first blockchain job. And I thought countless people become real world blockchain developers, many who had zero experience before they got started. In this video, I want to give you some of the top tips on how to land your first Web 3.0 job. Like, when should you start applying? How do you find jobs? How many places should you apply? Like, negotiating your salary, all that stuff. I'm going to talk about this as a blockchain developer who works this technology on a daily basis. And it's helped lots of other people land jobs with tips just like this. So, if you're new around here, hey, I'm Gregory. And on this channel, I turn you into a blockchain master. So, if that's something you're interested in, then smash that like button down below for the YouTube algorithm and subscribe to this channel. And if you want to learn how to master blockchain step by step start to finish, then head on over to adaptuniversity.com forward slash bootcamp and get started today. All right, so let's get into these tips for landing your first Web 3.0 job. So the first thing I want to talk about is when are you ready to start applying for jobs? Well, it's a lot sooner than you might think. And so you have to understand the strategy here. Everything I'm talking about video in this video is about getting that first job. And so what are you trying to do? You're trying to get just good enough where someone's willing to take a chance on you and then you can, you know, go provide value in their workplace. And then you can really get paid to learn beyond that where you're still giving value to the employer, but you're getting a lot of experience that you really couldn't get outside the workplace. All you have to do before you start applying for jobs is essentially prove that you can provide that value. And so how do you do that? All right. Well, the really thing that you need is a portfolio. A portfolio essentially shows your employer what you can do and proves that you have those skills to actually create something like that from scratch. Okay. And so as soon as you've created a portfolio that you have, you know, written for yourself from scratch, where you haven't just followed a guided tutorial, that's when you're ready to start applying for jobs. And so quick recap of that whole process, the best way to learn essentially is to do guided tutorials and then eventually build something unguided and once you've built that project on Guided, you put that in your portfolio, that proves what you can do, and then you're ready to start applying. So let's get into some of the other tips, like how do you find jobs, how many places you should apply. Well, at this point in the video, we're going to have to fork off into two different strategies, okay? The first strategy is kind of the conventional way of applying for jobs, where you're applying directly and going through the interview process. We're going to talk about that first and some of those tips, and then we're also going to talk about some unconventional ways of getting jobs that are honestly more effective in some cases, but they require a little more work. So I'll put those at the end of the video. So either way you go, you need that portfolio like I talked about uh, in the last step. But let's talk about the traditional route of basically just applying for jobs, going through the interview process and all that type of stuff. So um, where do you find jobs? That's the first question I get all the time. So there's lots of different places you can do this. You can go to the traditional route of basically looking on job websites uh, like Indeed.com, Monster.com. These aren't crypto specific, but they have all kinds of jobs. And then you can go, you know, look for crypto specific jobs within those websites themselves. Okay. You can look at other job recruiting websites where it's kind of the opposite direction, like hired.com, where you essentially create a profile that people sort of apply to you. And you can also look at crypto specific jobs websites. So there's sites like, you know, cryptojobslist.com, cryptocurrencyjobs.co, uh, crypto.jobs. There's lots of uh, sites like that, that, you know, filter specifically for things like Solidity Developer, which might be harder to filter for on bigger websites like indeed.com. So a couple quick tips when you're looking on these websites, you won't always see like smart contract developer jobs listed, uh, you know, in the title, like sometimes you look for things like blockchain engineer, or like general just blockchain developer, sometimes you have to do some advanced keyword digging to find the, the jobs that you're looking for. And another quick tip here is just because you know, a company does not necessarily say it's hiring beginners, um, as like a junior developer, if they're hiring anybody at all, there's a high likelihood that they uh, will hire a junior developer, especially if they have multiple roles open. Okay, so you can look at those job posting websites. Another way is to just think about places that you would like to work and then go to their website and look for their open positions and apply that way. Okay, so sometimes, you know, you'll see a thing that says jobs or careers on their website, you can click on it and they'll have the job postings listed. So here's the thing, if they're hiring developers at all, if they're hiring blockchain developers, it's like I said a second ago, even if they don't have junior developer listed on there, there's a high likelihood that they would still hire the right person for that role. So it's something you could, you know, potentially reach out for. So you could apply directly on the job website, or you could do things like, you know, email people on their team who are influential. You could send an email to the founder or the CEO and say, hey, you know, I'm a developer, I'm looking for a job. 
you know, think about good ways to get, you know, craft a cold outreach email and try applying that way. You know, it's not necessarily going to work every case, but it's one strategy that you could take. All right. So how many places should you apply before you get your first job? So this is a really great question. And I'll try to give you some principles on how to think about this than like an exact number. Okay. But let's let's talk about this. So essentially, when you're getting that first job, if if all you have is like a portfolio and you know a can-do attitude, there's still the truth that somebody ultimately has to take a chance on you in order to get hired. And not everybody's gonna do that. Okay. So that's just that's just the reality. So in order to actually get that first opportunity, the best shot that you have is has is playing the numbers game. So honestly, like the more places you apply, the better. So again, there's no real answer as to how exactly how many it's going to take before you land that first job. But let's think about it in terms of principles. So like if you apply at one or two places, like it's probably not going to happen. You might get lucky. All right. But let's just assume that one or two is not enough. Okay. Um, a thousand is probably too much. Right. So let's just assume that you had like a 2% success rate. Well, if you had a 2% success rate, then that would mean 50 places uh, applying before you actually get that first job. Now, I'm not even saying it's going to take that much, but if you like set your expectations of that and you went through that entire process, then that's going to increase the likelihood that you're actually going to find success. And if whatever your situation is now, let's say that you could get you know your foot in the door that can completely change your career. Do you think it'd be worth it to go through the application process for 50 different places, especially if all you had to do is submit your resume portfolio that you already have and just fill out some forms? Probably going to be worth a lot of people's time. And that doesn't mean you're going to sit through like 50 interviews. Like not everybody's even going to call you in for an interview. But if you go through this, most likely somebody will. And the more places you apply, the more likely that's going to be. All right. So let's talk about negotiating your salary. This is a pretty uh, common question that I get, which is like, how do you, how can you negotiate the best salary you can for your first blockchain job? So I'm going to give you some counterintuitive advice on this. Honestly, for your first blockchain job, like, I wouldn't even worry about this that much, okay? Because why? Well, if you really are trying to get your first job, you don't really have that much leverage to negotiate, right? And just getting in there and getting that first job and getting that experience is going to be tremendously valuable to you over the long term. And so honestly, like, just getting an offer from somebody and, you know, trying to find out what that offer is is probably the best strategy here than trying to squeeze out every little dollar. Like, you know, if you were able to just get a little bit more, uh, does it really matter if you're especially able to get a raise later or change jobs, right? Because that's that's the upside potential, but the downside potential is like they don't offer you the job and they walk. They have probably more leverage than you do in this situation. But if you do want to incorporate some amount of negotiation, he- here's some really dead simple stuff you can do for your first job. Try to at least get an idea of what they're willing to pay you first, because there's a risk here that you might be underpricing yourself. And so in the very least, like if you can figure out what they're willing to offer you, and that's within your expectation to make it worth your time, then great, just take it. Like I wouldn't necessarily try to sit there and tr- increase that price because there's a risk that you're going to say no and you're you're not going to get that job, especially if you're brand new and you don't have a good job now and you're trying to break in the blockchain space. But there could be some things like yeah, if the salary stuff's within your expectations and you want to try to negotiate some other benefits like you know vacation time or just some other you know soft benefits that aren't your, like your hard salary number, there could be wiggle room for that type of thing. Maybe it's like a certain work schedule uh, relative to what their initial expectations are. There could be ways where you could sweeten the deal without having to change what your compensation is. All right, so now let's talk about the other side of the equation. We've talked about some tips on how to go down that traditional route of just like applying to places uh, and going through the interview process. That's kind of the traditional route, right? The conventional route. So let's talk about some unconventional routes for getting a job. So uh, the first thing that's the most one of, those, one of the best ways to get a job in any industry is if you know somebody else who works at a company that can personally vouch for you and get you that in, then man, that's going to make your life so much easier when you're trying to get that job. And the same thing is true for Web 3.0 and blockchain. If you know somebody who works at a crypto company and they can help you get that interview and they can vouch for you, then that's going to make your life so much easier. But I'm going to assume that most people watching this video don't have that and that's why they're watching this video in the first place. But I do want to say it in case there's somebody out there who has that you know, uh, that edge. But let's talk about some other strategies that are unconventional for getting your first job. So one way to do is basically to get people to apply to work with you, okay? So how does this work? Well, the best way essentially is to get in front of other people who could potentially hire you where the premise of that, you know, appearance is not necessarily, you're, you're, not, you're not presenting yourself as someone who's there to get hired, but it could naturally lead to a hiring conversation. 
So how does this work? Well, a lot of it looks like basically educating people or providing value in some way in places where people are who can make higher decisions. So let me give you some examples. So, you know, the world is opening up again and uh, meetups for developers and conferences are starting to really become a thing again. There's lots of people who make hiring decisions who go to meetups and conferences, they go to talks, they go to workshops, they network with people, you know. And so if you're able to go to a conference or a meetup and actually educate other people, like you're going to have that authority and that's going to probably lead to lots of opportunities where people could have those conversations, okay? And so even if you can't give a talk, you know, from uh, a workshop or, or a panel or something like that, just trying to meet as many people and they talk about the things that you're working on and the like, problems that you solve that demonstrate your concept, that sorry, your competence, but actually do it in a way that's trying to help the other person um, solve their own problems. And that can very likely lead to hiring conversations. Now, that's the best way to do it. But honestly, sometimes these meetups, you could just say, hey, I'm looking for a job. <laughs> there could be people who might hire you because the demand is so crazy. Or if you go to meetups, like sometimes people just go around the room and say, hey, we're hiring. Or you could just say, hey, I'm looking for a job. I mean, you don't really have that much to lose. Like if it doesn't work, it just doesn't work. But meetups were how I got my first job as a software engineer, or I should say my first uh, freelancing role, because that's how I started in software development before I got into blockchain, uh, was by becoming a freelancer. I got my first freelancing gig uh, you know, at meetups by doing the exact same thing. All right, let's talk about some other ways that you can get in front of more eyeballs of people who are able to make hiring decisions. So let's not that we talked about in person stuff with meetups and conferences. Now let's talk about v ways to virtually do this. So the good news is the internet's a massive lever in this regard because you can get in front of a lot of different eyeballs. So how do you do this? Well, let's take social media as an example. So, um, you know, providing value to other people that demonstrates your technical competence is a really great way to do this. So the easiest way is to do things that accomplish multiple purposes. So like while you're building your portfolio, like build it in public and talk about it, talk about what you did, talk about how it works, how you might've solved a unique problem and then put your portfolio out there on a test network. Or, you know, if it doesn't have any regulatory concerns with it, like put it out there on some sort of low cost chain where people can actually use it, make some YouTube videos about it. Like talk about it on Twitter, post them on LinkedIn. Okay. And you'd be surprised uh, at what kind of conversations those can uh, come to. Because trust me, there's recruiters out there all over the place who are watching for this stuff. And at the end of the day, people need to be able to contact you from uh, direct messages to, uh, you know, email. There needs to be some way where it's very clear how to get in touch with you once you put that information out there. Okay, so trust me, this this really works. And so that's the primary way to give value online through education. Um, other ways to get value uh, are things like uh, you know, actually getting inside discord groups. Okay. So discord groups for, uh, anywhere that developers might hang out or, or projects that have discord groups themselves. Okay. Like let's say you want to go work at a certain, uh, DeFi, you know, for a protocol, basically, if you get inside these projects that have open source, uh, you know, communities then essentially you can look at other people asking questions in there. And if you can help answer those questions and demonstrate that you understand how their project works, like that's going to be a huge value, especially if it's developer based stuff. Uh, that'll help you get to know the people on the team. And then you could, you know, just have questions like, hey, are you guys hiring? And you'd, you'd be surprised what kind of conversations those can lead to. The other way is um, doing the same type of thing, but with GitHub. Okay. So lots of crypto web 3.0 startups are um, open source or have open source uh, projects associated with them. And so if there's any issues in GitHub, you can just fix them. If there's easy stuff in GitHub to fix, like readmes, right? Um, you know, all kinds of stuff where you can contribute to the project in some way, that's going to lead to, or it can lead to uh, these types of conversations as well. People get to know who you are. Um, you can have those conversations. All right. And so those are some uh, unconventional ways to get a job in Web 3.0, your first job. And so again, this looks like getting it for as many eyeballs as you can, where you're trying to provide value Anyway, it's not a direct ask for a job, but could easily lead to a hiring conversation. Now, it's one of the way I didn't talk about in the traditional route or this one, and that's to work with a recruiter. Okay. Um, I mean, that being said, like recruiters in many cases want to work with, you know, more senior people because they can make more money if they place them. All right. But that doesn't mean that recruiters won't work with uh, new folks either. Okay. Because, you know, as the pay scale increases for blockchain developers, you know, even people on the lower end of the totem pole can start making more, you know, and the recruiters might be able to find a way to help you 
get into a job that makes that worth their time. So I wouldn't rule that out completely. You know, maybe that's another thing that you could add to your tool belt. All right, so this is my top tips on how to land your first Web 3.0 job, okay? There's definitely some conventional ways to do this and some unconventional ways. But when do you know you're ready? Well, you need to teach yourself enough to where you can create that portfolio, get it out there, open source the code, make the app where people can use it, and then start, you know, uh, talking about it. I mean, and honestly, no matter what approach you take, you can do both these things at the same time. As long as you start talking about what you're doing in public, that could be the unconventional route while you're, you know, uh, applying for places. You can do both these at the same time. And trust me, this stuff works. So that's all I got for today. As always, smash that like button down below for the YouTube algorithm. Subscribe to this channel if you haven't already. That really helps these videos out so the more people can learn about blockchain. And if you're as fascinated with the technology as I am, you want to get your hands dirty, how can you get started today? Well, you can go to my YouTube homepage. You can find my free courses there. They're like Udemy courses, but they're totally free. And if you like those and you want to take the next step, or hey, maybe you want to take a master shortcut entirely, I can show you to become a blockchain master step-by-step -step start to finish over at dappuniversity.com forward slash bootcamp. You'd have to be an expert to get started today. I've helped people with zero coding experience become real-world blockchain developers in a matter of months. So that's all I've got. And until next time, thanks for watching Dapp University.